Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. Um, I do apologize for uh, my prior lesson, 173, being so long. I just got very excited about checklists and, um, well, uh, time got away from me. I'll try to keep this one to 10 minutes uh, because in this lesson, number 174, I'm going to show you replicated caching and what's called data collisions, uh, a potential big problem when we do replicated caching. Uh, you can find a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday um, at my website, uh, developer2architect.com slash lessons. If we um, use the Wayback Machine, go all the way back to lesson 78, um, I talked about replicated caching as a type of caching topology. Um, if you're not familiar with replicated caching, I would suggest pausing this video and watching Lesson 78 first um, and then coming back to here. Um, but let me show you what can possibly happen uh, with in-memory caching and ways or at least one way to avoid this problem. So let's say we've got two uh, services here, uh, two instances of our order placement service to place orders. And that in-memory data grid, um, that, that cache, uh, contains our inventory. Uh, so we've got 500 um, copies of my book, let's say. Well, we go and buy 10 units. And what, let me show you what's supposed to work. <laughs> well, what's supposed to happen is we buy 10 units. It comes into this instance. Well, we decrement our inventory to 490. Um, when we do that, Tools like Hazelcast, Ignite, Apache Ignite, uh, Gemfire, Coherence, Infinispan um, work behind the scenes to actually make sure that all other instances that have that same named cache are also updated. And now everybody has the current inventory. Let me show you what can go wrong. So I buy 10 units and it comes into the first instance and it decrements the inventory to 490. Uh, once I do that cache.put, uh, those tools come into play to start replicating that information across all other instances that have that same cache. Well, at the exact same time that's happening, somebody else comes in and buys five units. Uh, that comes into instance two. It decrements or does a cache dot put to 495 units. And what do you suppose happens? Yep, it starts the replication engine. Well, this is what's called a data collision because watch what happens. The first replication, 490, reaches all the services and ends up changing all of those to 490. The 495 comes in and changes all of the other instances now to 495. And the problem is we've purchased so far a total of 15 units. Our current inventory is 485, yet we don't show the right inventory. And worse than that, this inventory will never be right. So one of the ways of avoiding this problem is not to use in memory caching. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but rather uh, to create a service that is responsible for adjusting the inventory. We're still using in memory caching, but what we change is really an owner and then read only replicas. So we only have one instance ever updating that. Now, let me show you how we can avoid a data collision this way. So we buy 10 units, that comes into the first service. It decrements inventory, but what it does is it doesn't change its cache. It's a read-only. Rather, it streams that telemetry data, minus 10, um, over to a queue or over to Kafka or something. Now, when that finishes, we immediately buy five units over to instance two. Now, about at the same time this is happening, inventory adjustment service reads that information from that queue or that stream decrements its inventory in only one place. Now, those tools like Hazelcast and Ignite now replicate so everybody shows 490. Uh, the five units comes in. 
So now instead of decrementing, it just sends, we've got a minus five. And again, that finishes up. And at the same time that's happening, asynchronously, now we're dequeuing or reading from the stream that negative five, changing to 485, and now replicating all of the other in-memory data grids uh, to make sure that we're now all in sync. So we had uh, purchased 15, and our current inventory is 485, which will always be accurate. Of course, this kind of technique does, in fact, alleviate data collisions, but it adds additional latency. That's the trade-off. So while inventory will be consistent, what I've increased is the time, or impacted, is the time it takes for that data to become consistent. And so there's our trade-off. Well, how do you know whether this is a problem for you? Well, the collision rate is calculated as follows. We take the number of instances, we multiply it by the update rate squared, divided by our cache size, the number of rows, and multiply it by the replication latency. Most of this information we have. Uh, for example, let's say we have five instances of our service. Uh, the update rate is 200 a second. So 200 requests a second is our update rate. Not reads, but actual update to that cache. Uh, the cache has 50,000 rows. Now, the replication latency is really hard to calculate. Um, generally, with most uh, products, um, I usually use 100 milliseconds. Uh, it's usually faster, but especially if we're doing something in maybe AWS or GCP where we're doing cross-region synchronization, it might be up to 100. I like to use 100. So if we run this through that equation, turns out that we've done 720,000 updates per hour. But what that means is we're going to have 1,440 collisions per hour. That sounds like a lot, but it's actually only 0.2% collision rate, relatively low. Now, I love playing with these calculations. Uh, questions like, well, uh, what should I put for the auto scaling limit on Kubernetes for this service? Well, does it have a cache? Uh, why, yes, it does. We're using in memory. Now we've got some concerns because I might hit some data collisions. As a matter of fact, if you go to my GitHub repo, which is github.com WMR513, and you go to caching, and if you look at the main part there, you'll see a class. Um, it's actually a single page application called data collisions. And it's basically, I've, all I've done was just codify uh, this particular equation and I can use it to play around to say, what if my update rate went up? What if I added 10 instances? Uh, what if my cache size doubled? I mean, how is this going to impact my data collisions? So that can give you at least an idea of whether this is going to be a concern. Now, when does this really matter? When should you be concerned about this topic of data collisions? The first is high update rates. And this is where the calculation comes in. So whenever the update rate equals or exceeds the replication latency, you will have a data collision. And so let's take a look at this. The number of service instances is five. What's my update rate? One update a second. I just did an update, just did an update. 50,000 rows, 100 milliseconds of replication latency. My collision rate is, folks, zero because my update rate is so slow. However, let's make that 400 updates a second. Everything else stays the same. Five instances, 50,000 rows in the cache, but now we've upped the update rate to 400. Notice now we're going to have 1.6 possible collisions every second, uh, which means data will get out of sync. So we could use these to determine really our update rates. Low update rates, you really don't have to worry about the data collisions. But separate from this, the other time you have to worry about it is only when you have simultaneous updates to the same datum. Inventory is a great example because all of these inventory services, all instances, are trying to update the inventory for this single book. That's a single data item. 
so in this particular case, yes, we do have the concern. Whereas if only one instance can update one particular datum, then it's much less of an issue. All right, so this has been Lesson 174, just something you should be aware of called data collisions when we use in-memory replicated caching. So, um, well, thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.